Hey everyone, in this episode of Dr. Retro Reads Retro, we're going to take a look at issue number 5. And as you can see at the front cover, it focuses on Metroid and Castlevania. And those are two of my favorite games where I have a huge... Yeah, yeah. Castlevania easily wins for me. Metroid is amazing, but Castlevania is just up high, way, way more high. So let's take a look at what this episode or this issue has for us. First off, we have the usual, the contents, the letters from fans, and some questions, etc. Then there's a part about pinball games and arcade games. And I still want a pinball cabinet in my home, but no room at this time. Then something about homebrew games, Ralph Bear, Pinball Rises from the Ashes, and uh, something about the CGE. Then a really cool page about retro swag, has a Game Boy, uh, yeah, how do you call that, beach towel, and uh, some other stuff that we guys want to put in our homes and usually the girlfriend or any other people say, nah, not gonna happen. I actually have this one, the Pac-Man mug. Don't put that in the dishwasher because it ruins it. Then, Retro High Five, the five things, the five best things about the resurrection of retro. And it's an article about what things are better in retro games compared to games nowadays. And I do agree with most of them. Freedom from graphics, it doesn't really care how it looks, it's all about the gameplay. And uh, single player games, yeah, I'm not a big uh, multiplayer gamer anymore. Used to be, but not anymore. So, the single player game is where it's at for me. Then, a part about box art and uh, charity in video games, so about video games that are not about killing but uh, about doing good. Then an article I'm really looking forward to reading because it's all about how Donkey Kong Country was made and how it changed the lifespan of the Super Nintendo because without Donkey Kong Country the Super Nintendo probably would have lost against the Sega Mega Drive Genesis uh, in that generation. So it's a big article, four pages. Then something about Mule, this is way before my time, but it's one of the first, if not the first, online multiplayer game. It's one of those mod games, I believe. Uh, I've never played it, but I've, uh, I've heard about it. An article about Super Metroid, uh, arguably the best Metroid in the series, and um, I can't say I finished it, but I went pretty far. I think I got about halfway, and it's still on my list of games that I definitely need to finish. Then something about the Ultimate NES Remix, it's a 3DS game which has a lot of the old NES classics and I personally didn't hear about this game and yeah I'm not too excited about it because I have all these classics on my NES and if I want to pop them in I can just pop in my M82 uh, gaming cabinet but yeah for people that want to have them on the go it's a really cool thing. This is about the console wars, the original console wars, the Atari, the ColecoVision and the Intellivision. And uh, nowadays we think console wars was either Sega versus Nintendo or PlayStation versus uh, Xbox, but this was the first console war, Atari, ColecoVision and Intellivision. And there's some really cool old commercials about these as well. Um, if you look on YouTube, there's commercials uh, of uh, especially Intellivision or ColecoVision really bashing Atari at how ugly the games uh, looked. Then this is a part about Axiom Verge, it's a new game, I hadn't heard about it, but I'm gonna read it and see if it's something for me. Time Spinner, which looks really cool, the graphics look amazing. Um, it's for the PS4 and pretty much every new console that's out nowadays. It's out in the end of the year and I haven't read the article yet, but the, the, the graphics make me think, yeah, this is something I would buy and would play. Ninja Turtles, Danger of the Dose, and Salt, and Sanctuary. Then Pier Solar, and I wasn't up to date on this, but Pier Solar is out now on uh, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, etc. And I have Pier Solar, the original release with the Mega Drive and the Mega CD, but that one is still sealed. As a collector, I don't want to open sealed things. So I'm definitely going to download Pier Solar on the PlayStation 3 now to... Uh, yeah, to play this game because it really looks good and this is the kind of RPG that I love. So, yeah, this is something I'm going to download. 
part about Chariot, Chariot and Hack and Slash, Super Smash Bros. Wii U, Gauntlet, and a part about Castlevania Symphony of the Night. I'll have a hard time picking, but I think in the end my favorite PlayStation 1 game is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Runner-up really, really, really close is Metal Gear Solid, but Castlevania Symphony of the Night, just everything about this game is perfect. This gets 5 hearts, it should get 12 hearts, unlimited amount of hearts, it's, it's amazing. Uh, some smart, small parts about Karnov, Prehistoric Isle 2, Ninja Spirit, all of those I haven't played, and Destruction Derby. One of the games I played on my old PC as a kid, and yeah, I was never really into it. Just driving backwards to prevent damage to your car, and that's about it. The Insane Collection, the Strong National Museum of Play. And if you look at the pictures, I haven't read the article yet, but even... I have a big collection, you probably know my collection, it's quite big, but this is just... Wow. If I see this, uh, I start drooling. I can't look at this too long because I get jealous and I want to spend all my money. And I don't want to do that. Then, Nintendo 64. I've said it before, I'll say it again. It's my least favorite console for, from Nintendo. Um, I can't think of more than five or six games that are really worth playing on the Nintendo 64, in my opinion. I know you guys probably don't agree. But if you've had Con Conker's Bad Fur Day, Banjo Kazooie, and uh, the Zelda games, it's pretty much done for me. I yeah, Super Mario 64, and yeah, that's it. Because the Mario Party games were never my thing. Super Smash Brothers wasn't that good on the Nintendo 64, in my opinion. I like, I really love the GameCube version, and I prefer the GameCube uh, as a console by far. An article about collecting Castlevania, and when I look at this list, I think I'm. Pretty much, I'm like at 80% if you don't count, uh, if you do count uh, the, the Japanese only games. But yeah, I'm quite happy with that, because I love me some Castlevania. Then, a rarity report on a really, really rare Game Boy game, Trip World. I've had a cartridge copy of this once, uh, I think I sold it for about 100 euros for just a cartridge, and that's the only time I've had it. Never had a complete one, and yeah, probably never will. I'll just, uh, yeah, I'm okay with that. It's a game I would love to have, but I'm not going to pay 1200 euros for a complete unbox Game Boy game. Pigskin games, so some uh, action, some football games. Or, and this is about convention, wisdom, guns and ammo. Sean Baby vs. The World. Uh, it's about box art that looks nothing like the game at all. And yeah, pretty much everything up until even now has box art that doesn't look anything like the game at all. And that was it. This is issue 5 and uh, yeah, as you saw it has some really interesting articles that I'm definitely going to dig in deep. Like the Castlevania one, the Donkey Kong one and uh, also a lot on games that I didn't know before. So a lot to learn and a lot to read. If you want to order the retro magazine you can do that with a discount. Check out my uh, description here in the, in the video and uh, hope to see you again next time. Bye bye.